Hi, I'm Peter Lamont, a New Jersey business and personal law attorney. I'd like to welcome you to this edition of Practical Law. Now, there are times when you need to file a lawsuit and the damages that you're seeking are $15,000 or below. In some cases, it might be very low, $150 or $200, and it might not make financial sense for you to hire an attorney. In those cases, you're looking at filing a lawsuit in New Jersey's Special Civil Division. And there are forms that you can fill out to initiate the case. So today we're going to take a look at filling out a summons and complaint in the Special Civil part of the Superior Court in New Jersey. Okay, so we're going to take a look at now filling out the Special Civil part complaint and summons. Before we get into filling out the forms, I want to make a couple points. First of all, when can you use these forms? Well, you can use them for legal matters that involve property damage, breach of a verbal or written contract, um, defective merchandise that you might have purchased, a landlord who refuses to give you a security deposit back, if you've done work and you've not been paid for it, uh, a whole host of things that you can sue for, but there are a couple things that you cannot use this special civil part form for, and they include a claim for child support and or alimony, and claims arising from a probate matter, a prerogative writ, or a claim for equitable relief. So those are things you cannot bring in the special civil part. For all else, you can use this form. Now one more thing, special civil has a cap of $15,000 for what you can recover in the Special Civil Division. In other words, if your case has a value greater than $15,000, you cannot recover beyond the $15,000. So in other words, if your case is valued at $20,000 and you want to sue in Special Civil, you can do so, but you're not going to get more than $15,000. Um, if it's above the $15,000 limit, most people file in the law division, not in the special civil part. But it's a strategy decision. It's a financial decision. Is it worth uh, a quick trial date? Is it worth a reduced fee to file in special civil, even if I'm going to lose a little money? That's a personal decision. If you're having that issue, you should probably talk to a lawyer just to get some feedback. But for the most part, we're going to look at cases that are $15,000 and under, and we're going to use for the purposes of this instruction uh, a, a scenario whereby you paid Bob at Bob's Painting to do work on your house, to do some painting. He had you sign a written contract. You did so, and he took your money, but he never showed up to do, to, to do the job. So now we're going to sue Bob. Okay, the damages that you have are $1,000. That's what the contract was. So you're out $1,000. You say to yourself, I want to get my money back, but I don't want to pay a lawyer because it's going to cost me too much money. And I don't want to you know, spend money that I shouldn't be spending when I can do it myself. All right, that's your choice. So you're going to figure out now, what do I do? Where do I sue? Well, you're going to sue in the special civil part, and you're going to use... Complaint Form A. Now, a complaint is the way that you tell the court what the legal issue is. A summons, which we're going to get to in a second, here's what the summons looks like. That alerts the defendant that, hey, you're being sued. Now you've got to do something. So let's go back to the complaint for a second. All right, let's look at what we're going to fill out here. First things first, you are the plaintiff. You're suing Bob's painting. So your name here your street address, town, state, zip code, and telephone number. Who are you suing? Well, in this case, it's going to be Bob at Bob's Painting. Let's assume, just for simplicity's sake, that Bob's Painting is not an entity. It's not an LLC. It's just a guy, Bob, who says, hey, I'm, I'm Bob's Painting. So you don't need to sue his company. You're just suing Bob. You're going to put his street address, town, city, zip, and then the telephone number. Now, I'm going to mention this again in the summons section, but be very careful that you enter the defendant's address correctly because the court is going to look to what information you have provided 
as to the address where they're going to send the summons and complaint to. That's called service. They're going to send via the mail a copy of your summons and complaint that will alert the defendant that he is, or she is being sued. In this case, it's a he because it's Bob. He's being sued and that he has 35 days to file an answer. Otherwise, you, the plaintiff, will be entitled to a default judgment. Once that service happens, your case is underway. But until service happens, all you've done is preserve your statute of limitations by filing the case. So this is really, really critical to make sure you've got the right address. Now up here, we're going to select the county. In which county are you going to sue? Well, let's say, for example, that you live in Bergen County and so does Bob. So you're going to select Bergen County. The docket number, you don't need to do anything with because the court will fill in that document or the docket number for you. Now let's go down to the reason why you're suing. Now, as you see here, it says you can attach more sheets if you need to. Oftentimes, people make the mistake of saying, all right, what's my cause of action? Um, I had a contract with him. He didn't do what he said. Breach of contract. So I'm just going to type in breach of contract. That's my entire case right there. While it might be acceptable, it's not advisable. What I suggest you do is to give more of a narrative, more of a description. On June 1st, I hired Bob to do painting in my house. I signed a contract with Bob and I paid Bob $1,000. Bob never showed up to do the work. My house still isn't painted. Here's a copy of the contract. I'm looking for my money back. That is important for two reasons. First of all, it lets the judge and the law clerk uh, and the court in general understand why you're suing him, not just simply breach of contract. That doesn't tell us anything. The other potential benefit that it has is that when the defendant gets served with a lawsuit, Bob's going to be able to clearly understand what the issue is. If Bob is smart, Bob will say, oh shoot, I did all these things and I don't really have a defense, so I better settle with him or her, the plaintiff, and, and either give all the money back or maybe they'll accept partial money back. And if Bob goes out and hires a lawyer, if he's a good lawyer, he or she will suggest to Bob, hey, listen, you have no defense. Here's the causes of action that are alleged. You should give the money back. So there's that, that hidden benefit of making sure that the defendant understands why you're suing him. Now you go down here to the amount that you, the plaintiff, are demanding. Well, we know that Bob charged you $1,000. That is the amount that you're requesting, plus interest. Don't worry about this, because the court will calculate this based upon the statutory interest rate, so you don't need to worry about that. Now, they want to know the cost for suing, because you're entitled to reimbursement of that. What that means is that you're going to pay a certain amount to the court to file the complaint and to have the court serve the complaint. And you're entitled to recoup that money. How do you figure that out? Well, the court will provide you with a worksheet. It looks like this. It's called Instructions for Computing Filing Fee. If your case is below $3,000, the cost to file the case is $32. Now, in our case, we're suing Bob for $1,000. So we're going to enter in here $32. We don't have any additional defendants, so that's going to be a zero. And then we have to pay for mail service, $7 for each defendant. We only have one, so it's $7. Now we come down to the jury trial fee. The decision whether or not to have a jury trial is a legal strategic decision. Sometimes a case would require the sympathy of a jury. You wouldn't want just a judge to look at it. Other times, it's something that's so straightforward where you don't need a jury. You don't want any sympathy. You don't want anybody's personal um, you know, feelings. They don't, you don't need to present evidence to them. The judge can handle it. And it's a um, semi-complicated decision as to whether or not you are going to select a jury uh, trial. But when you're dealing with low dollar amount cases, most people tend to say, I don't want to spend the additional $50, so I'm going to just waive the jury trial. And ultimately, if you do so, you're going to have a judge deciding the issue, which is fine for certain cases. 
In this case, it's a breach of contract claim, and it's really straightforward because we have the signed contract. We have our canceled check so showing that we paid Bob. We don't need a jury to look at this. The judge can easily decide it. So what's my total going to be? Well, my total is going to be 32 plus 7, $39. So now I can go back to my complaint, and I can enter in $39 for the cost of suing. I'm almost done with this form. Just a couple more things. So we go down here. Do you need an interpreter? Well, in this case, we don't. Now, if you did, you'd click yes and you'd indicate the language and a, an interpreter would be provided for you. Do you have a disability that requires a special accommodation? In this case, we're going to say no. Now, you look at these last two certifications. By signing this document, you're first certifying that the matter which you're suing about is not the subject of another court case or arbitration. This is a genuine new matter that you're bringing before the court. You know, it's not like you have an arbitration of the same thing and you're trying to get double the, the relief or, you know, it's the first time that this is being brought, essentially. So you're certifying that. And then you're also certifying that any confidential information is being redacted. What does that mean? Well, let's assume for a second that you are going to attach a copy of the contract to your complaint. And for whatever reason, Bob decided that since he didn't have a home improvement contractor's license number, he'll put his social security number down. Well, this rule, right, 1 colon 38-7B, says that you should not submit personal information. It needs to be redacted or crossed out. Right, so essentially redacted means just that, revise it, cross it out, cover it up so that you can't see it. Now the type of information that you would want to redact is obviously social security numbers, bank account information, confidential information that you would not obviously want disclosed needs to be redacted. If you want more guidance on that, you can look at the rule, rule 1 colon 38-7B. All right, then you obviously date the document, and you sign it, and you type your name. That's it. You're done with the complaint. Now, the complaint lets the court know what your legal issues are. But now you need to let the defendant know that you're suing him or her. In this case, we're suing Bob. So we need to prepare a summons. And this is Form B of the special civil part. Um, and you're going to go up here, and you're going to do just like you did on the complaint. You're going to type your name, plaintiff, your address, your telephone number, your name again. Remember, you are the plaintiff. And then you're going to put in Bob's information. So Bob's painting. Then you're going to come up here, and you're going to fill out the top part. So what's your demand amount? Well, we know it's $1,000 because that's what your contract was. The filing fee, we know from the previous page and from the worksheet, is $32. Plus the service fee is $7 to serve one defendant. There are no attorney's fees because you're not an attorney. You're handling this pro se, and you put your total amount that you're seeking to recover which is $1,039. Now we go down here. Again, we select the county. You and Bob are in Bergen, so we're going to select Bergen. This, you can leave blank. Docket number, it says right here that the court will provide it, so you don't need to worry about that. Then you need to go down here and you need to check off whether or not it is a contract case or a tort case. All right, so in this case, I'm going to click contract because this case arises out of a breach of contract between you and Bob. Bob breached the contract. Now, a tort is negligence action, or it's a product liability action. It could be uh, civil assault or civil battery, defamation, um, you know, some sort of intellectual property dispute. That would be considered a tort. Everything else where you've got an oral or written agreement is contract. Now you're going to go down here and you're going to insert Bob's information, including his full address. 
And like I told you on the complaint, this part is critical because the court is going to look at the summons as the only means that they have to mail this information to Bob. If you put the wrong address, he's not going to get it. And if he's not served, your case doesn't go anywhere. You may have filed the complaint, but if it doesn't get served on Bob, nothing happens. Now, this section down here is not for you to worry about. This is all for the court to fill in. So that's it. The, now you've completed the summons and the complaint, right? And now what do you do with it? Well, honestly, what I would recommend is that you do a cover letter to the court addressed to the clerk advising what you're doing. I mean, obviously, a clerk's going to get a summons and complaint and understand it needs to be filed, but it's so much better for you, for your records, and for the clerk if you do a cover letter that says, Dear Clerk, attach, please find the summons and complaint, and I'm submitting it for filing. Now, there's one other thing that you need to include, and that is your payment, because you need to pay for the filing and service. You need to write a check for the $39. You write the check payable to the treasurer, state of New Jersey. And you, if I were you, I'd write it in the memo exactly what this is for, filing fee for case against Bob. And you attached your check to your cover letter, which can also mention the fact that the filing fee is enclosed, your summons, your complaint. Once you submit all of that to the clerk, they'll take your check, they'll cash it, They'll process your paperwork, they'll mail out the summons and complaint to the defendant, and assuming that he or she receives the mail, um, they're served. I mean, the only reason that somebody wouldn't be served is if you had the wrong address, they had moved and you didn't know it, but service is considered effectuated once the special civil court mails out the letter. And, you know, the, the recipient, Bob, will get a letter in the mail that says, here's the summons, you've been sued, here's the complaint, he'll be able to look at the allegations, and then he'll either contact you to try to resolve it, or he'll get an attorney to attempt to defend it. But in any event, this is all you need to do to start your case in the special civil part. Well, I hope that you found today's video helpful and that we explain the basics of filling out a special civil summons and complaint. If you have any questions about this topic or other topics, please feel free to give us a call. The phone number is 973-949-3770, or you can email me at info at peterlamontesq.com. Remember, before doing anything on your own, speak to an attorney. See if an attorney is affordable, if you believe you need to have the representation of an attorney before you handle any matter on a pro se basis. Thanks for joining me and I'll see you next time.